Hi everyone, so um, we're going to have Louise um, from Rare speak to us today. Um, she's a little bored dynamite, so I think she's going to be hell of entertaining. <laughs> so yeah, she is. Hello everyone. Oh God, look how short I am. This always happens. This is just like so shortest. I can't see her at the front, so you can just see her eyes. Okay, so um, today, I'm going to share with you some of my top tips for surviving and thriving in the games industry. So I'm assuming most of you are not in the games industry just yet. Or any, is anybody in the games industry? Because this is also... Okay, I'll give you some tips, Nick. It's cool. <laughs> um, and I'm going to give you um, just my top tips. I've been making games for 20 years. It's my, my anniversary this year at Rare for, for 20 years. So I think I know one or two things, but like it might be bullshit, but I think they, they're good. I will say I am definitely going to swear inadvertently at this. So if you're concerned about that, you should leave now. And as you can tell, I might have a little theme going on here. It's quite proud of my name, Night of the Living Dev. Uh, anyway, I thought, I thought it was funny. Uh, so there will be swearing, there will be really bad pictures of game devs, uh, and there will probably be some examples of really old games that I've worked on in the past So that don't even anymore fit the aspect ratio of the modern TV. They're so old. Um, who here knows Rare? Cool, okay. Well, this kind of ruins my next video, so for those of you who don't know who Rare is, here's a little video of where I work. Hello, this is Rare. This is a group of people that are really excited about what they're doing. Everyone's here to help. Everyone's on the same page. It's a really great place to try out new things. Well, what makes Rare so special and separates it from other studios is the site. We drive every day to work in the beautiful English countryside and see nothing for miles. It's pretty incredible. We've got this massive heritage of really diverse games. And you know, it's the same drive that's always pushed the studio that drives us now. The, that desire to create really exciting, different games. And whether it's through things like Rare Jam or just meeting talented, like-minded people, you get to learn so much and do things that you wouldn't normally do. We're given the freedom and support to go and make the most forward-thinking and exciting games in the industry and that's where I think we're really unique. And for me, there is absolutely nowhere else I'd rather be. So that's inside the corridors of the crazy rare people. And you will find that I cheat when I do my talks because I fill them with videos. Um, so I'm gonna go straight into lesson number one. And this is a hint of what lesson number one is. Can anybody guess what this might be? Stay in peak condition, okay? Um, it's really important that in order for you to survive and thrive in the games industry, that you stay in peak condition. You've got to train harder than everybody else. You've got to work harder than everybody else. Um, and this applies to game dev in this way. It just means you've got to do a little bit more. Um, it applies to us as devs and it also applies to you as students coming into the industry. Make things in your spare time. Like seriously, don't just do what you're told to do in your course. If you love games, you love making things, go do it in your spare time. That's like make art, make games, make comics, make videos, create rigs, do thing, the thing that you love, but do it in your spare time. Just fill up your portfolio, scale up as much as you can. The great thing about what we do is you actually have all the tools at your disposal to go do this. Use them, learn them, get to know them. These are the ones that we use at Rare. All of these we have over the years used. Um, learn what the industry standards are as much as you can. And what this also does, it helps you learn and know and understand what your weaknesses are. And it's okay to have weaknesses, we all do. And it's really important that you recognize your weakness, weaknesses because you wanna pinpoint them, understand them, and aim to improve them. And if you do so, you will be on a path to survival. So, lesson number two, Shaun of the Dead, one of my favorite horror films. Uh, lesson number two is this, uh, find your allies. So you've really got to listen to the people around you and work with others. Loners very rarely survive the apocalypse. So don't forget that. They get picked off piece by piece. They've got to find their allies. Uh, friends and allies are important factors in surviving. The reason for this is this. 
The games industry is a really sociable, really collaborative space. It's about taking the skills of others, combining them with your own, and becoming better as a dev. Learn from others, ask those questions, and grow as an individual. This is the, the Rare team. Out at Rare. If you, did, if you didn't know that, then you know, it's a dead giveaway. Um, this is us playing Werewolf, which I really like. Also play board games. Make board games and play board games. Werewolf is good. I'm really good at this game because I'm a really good liar. Um, this is very important. This is us eating and drinking after we launched uh, Live and Reloaded. It's the Conquer team. This is somebody helping me drink vodka from a vodka luge. A good friend. <laughs> <coughs> Um, and this is us when we went and shot some actual zombies um, and we dressed up as different characters from some of her favourite games. So I dressed up obviously as Claire from Resident Evil 2. Great game. Uh, <clears throat> so find your allies. Lesson number three. Learn to improvise. Um, you've got to take advantage of your skills. Oh yeah, there's some curses on here, but yeah. How cool is that? How good would a motherfucking chainsaw katana be? Like, anyway. Take advantage of your skills and your allies and all of the things that you have at your disposal. So maybe you've written a piece of code for one thing. Try and reuse it where you can and do something else. Improvise. Do this with any of your disciplines, with art, animation. Be really smart about your approach to work. Um, so I'm going to give you an example. Here's one of those old videos. So uh, a game that I worked on many, many, many years ago was Conquer's Bad Fur Day. And uh, basically, Conquer, who here has played it? You're all too young to play that game, so just so broke the rules. Okay, so those of you who know it, Conquer basically has an obscene amount of idols because as game developers, for whatever reason, we expect our players to like leave their controllers down and so we have to make our characters animate and do things on the side. So Conquer pulls an array of things out of his non-existent trouser pockets. Um, one of them being juggling balls. Um, and as we were creating this animation, I couldn't get the juggling balls to work on his wrist because in the engine, um, the wrists were animated. So the juggling balls kept, and they were also animated, so the juggling balls kept kind of moving all over the place. Um, so we improvised. In this animation, the juggling balls are not attached to Conker's wrist, they're actually attached to his right ankle, which when he's standing up and juggling, does not move at all. <laughs> so we improvised and we were able to put this animation in. Um, and when I think about improvisation, it leads me to also thinking about this. Learn to adapt, lesson number four. Sometimes, a lot of the time, plans don't always work out the way you want them to or expect them to. Um, so be prepared to adapt along the way. Adapt to the changing world. Games industry is a really fast-paced, fast-moving industry, so be prepared that things might change as you go along. Um, the nature of games can be, games development can be unstable sometimes, and it can be really unpredictable sometimes as well. But that's okay. You've got to be okay with change and embrace it. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, well, all of the time, we're making something. We don't know if we're making a hit or not. We're, we're really confident in the things that we're making, but we don't know what's going to happen until we get it into the hands of players. Um, the industry, the technology is constantly changing, um, so we have to be prepared to adapt. Um, so every step of the way during my career, I started out as an animator, um, I learned and adapted. So I'm going to give you an example. After I'd finished um, Live and Reloaded, uh, which was the kind of port remake of Conker's Bad Fur Day uh, for Xbox, um, we started looking at building a new game. Uh, and so we spent a year working on prototyping this new game. And I'm going to show you this. So this is my favorite thing ever to work on is a third person action adventure horror movie, a uh, uh, horror game, uh, and this was the perfect game for me. Again, shitty quality, but you get the idea. <clears throat> The only real choice for you I can see.
So this was a game that we pitched. Only the Conquer team could get away with with something like this, with her pulling the balls off of a big bad wolf. Um, so we spent a year prototyping this, um, and our team lead, Chris, went to go pitch it one day. And when he came back, he went, hey, it went really, really well. But guess what? They don't want us to make this game. They want us to make Perfect Dark Core, which was, if those of you know Rare, we've made a couple of Perfect Dark games. And so we were tasked with prototyping another game. Um, so what we did was we had to take everything we'd learned in the year to develop our skills as developers for Urchin and kind of transfer it and adapt it uh, for a Perfect Dark Core um, pitch. Ooh, I have a video of this. So here's some videos that we did. Um, so actually, we learned a lot in the year, even though Urchin is, has never seen the light of day, unfortunately, it was a wonderful game. Um, we took a lot of what we had learned and applied it to Perfect Dark Core, uh, which was a totally different game. So we went from a third-person adventure um, game to a first-person shooter game. Um, but yet we were still using and developing our animation engines and our techniques and everything that we were doing. Um, so we developed a, really, a lot of really amazing tools, so we used them for Perfect Dark Core. Um, and actually we built a really robust and awesome animation engine as a result. Um, and we pitched that a year later and they said no to that too. That also happens, but it's fine. We just adapt it and keep going, right? Lesson number five, which I think Kim alluded to. This is my favorite lesson. Please don't be a dick. Okay, so, and, every, and you know this, anybody who's watched a zombie survival film, the dick guy or girl always gets eaten in a horrible manner. Don't be that person, right? Um, be unafraid to take chances and risks. That's all cool, but do it in the right way. So I'm gonna give you some examples, because um, this covers quite a lot of areas. So this is actually a recent thing. So basically, any of you who are writing applications uh, to any of the studios, um, they come to the leadership team. And I'm on that leadership team, so I get to read every single application that comes in. And sometimes we get applications from people who get really pissed off at a game. So this guy, are you in the room? Who wrote this? Because <laughs> that would be cool. No. Um, uh, uh, so basically, um, so he sent this in, and it started out kind of okay. Um, and then I see the content still like coming into development. Um, so obviously, awesome at design. So with that being said, between my creative ideas based on an existing but not used business model in the gaming world, I don't even know what that means. Um, I offer you my services. Why, thank you, sir. And no, I will not got oh sign up oh careers. Go here, post there, apply away, etc. Please feel free to contact me if you would like to hear some ideas. So I'm going to say this guy's a bit of a dick. We didn't answer, by the way, and didn't ask for the ideas. This is one example. Don't do this. Don't be this guy, OK? Uh, we have all of his information. Uh, so we've got another one here. Got a few. I mean, some of you might remember many years ago. Um, Microsoft bought Rare. We used to make games for Nintendo, and then Microsoft bought us out, and we got bombarded with things like this. You were taken from us too soon, and fuck you, Microsoft. What you did to Rare sickens me. Um, I, I really think it looks bad, though. This was on a game that I worked on, which is Connect Sports Rivals. Um, this is recent, where we had, uh, you know, International Women's Day. Never seen so many lesbians happy to be at work. I actually don't know if that's a bad thing. I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> we are happy to be at work. Um, and this one here, this was uh, during the same when we posted a picture from the International Women's Day. Y'all focus more on this shit than your glitchy shit fest you call a gay, right? I love all of our fans. They're brilliant. Then Rare was dying anyway before Microsoft took them over. Rare, you guys were my favorite game developers growing up, whether it was Banjo or DK, there was always some kind of magic. I wish Microsoft would let you make more games or even let you work with Nintendo again. Never say never. Um, this is one of my favorites. My favorite Rare game is Sonic 3. <laughs> um, then there's some nice ones. I did a video before and people kind of go, oh my God, I recognize that voice because I did the voice of Lee Foss and Viva Pinata. Anybody play Viva Pinata? Yeah. Yes, I am Lee Foss, so hey. Um, so I get some nice ones as well. Not everybody is a dick. Um, 
And that moves it on. Oh, hang on. Did I have one more thing to say in that? Oh, so I should say when you do get into it, this can also read, don't read the comments. I like to read the comments because I find them quite funny. So if you don't want to feel upset or hurt, don't read the comments. And um, you kind of have to have a thick skin in the games industry. We have really, really passionate people who love what we do and we try our best to do the right thing by them. So don't read the comments if you don't want to get upset. But on balance, there's a lot more great things said about the, the games and the devs and then there are negative things, usually. Lesson number six is kill the infected. So this is about killing infected ideas or things that aren't working out. So as an animator, I'd get to a point where I'd get animators block and I would have to just like, do I work at it for days on end or do I just kill it and start again? So my advice is just kill the infected and start again. Um, there's always that moment when something just turns rotten, isn't quite working out. You, you kind of know when it's not gonna work out, just stop it. To stop it and start again. You'll actually have learned a lot for, it's about failing fast. The best thing you can do is learn to fail fast and move on quickly. So don't be afraid to do that. Here's an example. So the original design was actually on the We built a map uh, and it had, and it kind of got added to things that got merged into other things. Chris had the clever idea of getting the start sorted and the end sorted. And then it doesn't matter what you chop out of the middle because people just won't know who's going to be there. When I started, there was this huge sprawling land. By the time I ended, like most of the edge worlds had been cut out and just like, focused on these, these bits in, in, in the center. I just remember looking at it one day and seeing lots of X's through a bunch of the worlds. I'm like, we want to get this done in time. <laughs> We've got to get rid of all this shit. Moving on to lesson number seven. Um, so, I'm actually going to get you guys to stand up in a minute, okay? So, who here wants to be in the games industry? Stand up if you do. Wow, okay, just take a little look around you. Yeah, okay. Um, these are your competition. <laughs> All of these people want to get into the games industry. They're also your allies, so don't forget. Um, and that's why I lead to this one. You can sit down now. I could have kept you standing longer, but I won't. Um, this is lesson number seven. Don't ever underestimate anyone or anything in the games industry. Um, so you saw all these people here, and every time I do this, without fail, you have 100 people stand up, or 20 people, or 30 people. Everybody stands up, right? Um, remember these faces, remember these people. Keep them as allies and friends. As somebody said earlier on, this industry is super small, so we know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody else, so we know pretty much everything about everybody. Um, also remember that people move at different paces in the games industry. So the people who are starting here now may someday become your manager quickly. Or they may be a colleague or they may be somebody that you're working, who's working for you. So show everyone equal respect along this journey. That's a really, really important thing. And don't ever underestimate anybody. Um, this also is another thing. When I say don't underestimate anything, I mean don't underestimate the games industry because uh, making games is not easy. Is, is there anybody in this room that thinks making games is easy? Good answer. Um, the industry is hard work, it can be stressful, and it can be long hours. Um, we are really, really passionate about what we do, so we work our asses off. Um, Sometimes you can work so hard that you hate games for a short time and you never want to look at them ever again. Um, but the majority of the time, because you're passionate about what you do, you just put all that effort and energy in. So do not under and underestimate anything about this games industry. It is hard work, so be prepared to work hard. And always respect games of others. Don't, you know, we go back to don't be a dick slide. You know, can you imagine how hard somebody's worked on a game and then somebody says, oh, you know, I hate you. <laughs> it's fine, I'm over it. <laughs> okay, lesson number eight. This is a really good one. Keep it simple. This is what everything. I think Kim said this. You can apply this to your CVs and your applications. You know, don't do 50-page CVs. I don't want your life story. But keeping it simple is really good. You've got to imagine as an industry, we get like hundreds of applications. Um, uh, so keep, make it pop. Uh, make it stand out but just at a glance. Um, and this applies to development as well. Uh, usually the simplest option is the best option. Please stop complicating. Anybody here want to be a designer? 
right? You are going to overcomplicate everything, right? At some point, okay? So, I'm just, my advice is look for the simplest option because the goal isn't to overcomplicate something or to build some intricate thing. The goal is to create an experience for somebody else so they feel a certain way. So, whatever it takes to get to here in the simplest way is usually going to be the best way. Um, so always try and build the simplest version of the things you're trying to create. And don't try and solve problems that have already been solved. So if you're going to go pitch a game, don't pitch, you know, an awesome Mario type platformer. If that's your mechanic, that's already been done. Find the thing that makes you special and pitch that instead, okay? Lesson number nine. Have fun! As much as it's like really hard work and all that stuff and people are mean to you, it's cool. Making games is actually a really, really fun thing to do. I love my job, I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, so it's really important that you get into the habit of having a great work-life balance. Uh, that's the other thing I love to see in people's CVs. You know when it gets to hobbies and interests and you say, I play games, I seriously worry about people like that. So if you've got other hobbies, put them on there. Like the board games, the uh, uh, role-playing games. Love seeing shit like that. So like have hobbies, extra cricket, you gotta live life in order to build these experiences. Um, so I'm gonna show you a video, which are a uh, rare, re we release a video like every week or two videos every week. Um, so, but it's the devs behind the scenes that make the video. So this is just an example of the kind of fun that we have at Rare. None of these are professional or paid actors. Shock horror. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, there are some people who might call our methods unorthodox, who might think that our approach is extreme, but those people, there's just a wasp in my face. Rare replay, this right here. Too, too bad. Fuck. <laughs> I get cut from every video because I just curse at the end. They can't edit me in, so I'm just like, yeah, they put me in the outtakes video. And uh, so we really have fun at what we do. So just remember to have fun, enjoy life, and enjoy what you're doing. As soon as you stop having fun, then this is probably not the industry for you. Okay, lesson. We're nearly there. Lesson number ten is watch out. This is actually not as menacing as it sounds. Learn from other developers. Go do conferences like this, they're really, really good. Learn about their stories of survival. Everybody has a different take on their experiences in the games industry. Um, I'm a big fan of GDC and the vaults, so if you can get access to any of these, go check out the GDC vaults. Uh, learn from the trenches of old school developers. Some of us are old and jaded, but we have interesting stories. Um, but stay passionate. You guys are the ones that will keep us excited about what we do. Um, and actually being passionate about the games industry, as you you learn from other older in industry veterans is is something that will make you stand out and be special and um, so keep that energy keep it bring it into the industry that's exactly what we need from the new crop of developers um, 
Lesson number 11 is this, is keep your humanity. Um, so remember that you will someday be a games developer and remember your humanity when you get into it. Be empathetic to others, be understanding, be thoughtful. These are your friends and colleagues. You're gonna work long, hard hours with these people and sometimes people need a bit of support. So remember that. Um, the other thing when we think about being empathetic is remember your end user. You're not building a game for you, you're building a game for them. Um, Think about how you want to make them feel. You know, we don't want them to just go, yeah, this is another whatever. How do you want to make them feel in this moment? So be empathetic to your end user. Um, be humble, be willing to listen, and be willing to learn and grow, and you'll do just fine. And finally, lesson number 12 is never stand still. So it kind of echoes the first one. <clears throat> I like this little video. It's a really good example of, you know, like it's like going in the wrong way, moving on a sidewalk, right? So you could be this person, you could be this person, and you'll go backwards. So to get ahead, you've got to keep moving forward. And that means learning from your mistakes. Um, always strive to be better. Keep asking questions. I'm 20 years doing this and I still ask questions every day. Make yourself stand out. What makes you different? I'm uh, what makes you stand out? What makes you different from everybody else? Uh, and the other thing is never give up, right? Um, it's hard to break into the games industry. You have to be exceptional. I mean, we take great people, we take passionate people, and we take good, kind people as well in the industry. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to work. Um, I've got an example. There's a, a, a lady who works with me. Um, Stevie, who is a lifelong rare fan. And um, when she was a kid, she, she fell in love with Donkey Kong and it was something that got her through some hard times when she was in school. And she made it her dream at, when she was like 12 to work at Rare one day. And Stevie applied to be a character artist at Rare and got turned down. And then she applied again and got turned down. And then she applied again. And now she's a full-time, valid, valuable, wonderful member of our team. So never, ever, ever give up on your dreams. Um, myself, I started as an animator, and um, when I think about how I moved forward, uh, I was a keyframe animator, I thought I was going to go work for Disney, and I fell into the games industry totally by accident, and have fallen in love with the games industry as a result. Over the years, I taught myself how to edit videos, and um, I taught myself how to do people management, I taught myself how to animate Excel sheets and PowerPoints, right? All of the fun things. Um, and now I'm an executive producer, right? So I went from an animator to an executive producer in my time. Anything's possible if you want it and you strive for it. So never stand still. Um, and that's pretty much it. These are my top 12 tips to survive and thrive in the games industry. And the games industry does mean survival. It means hard work. It means dedication and long hours. It also means making friends, uh, people you can rely on. It means learning amazing and incredible new skills and life lessons. And these tips, I hope, will not only help you survive the games industry, but I think they will help you thrive in the games industry as well. Thank you.